Yes, and in 2008, I discovered the secret to happiness, and that's why I'm here. But before I discovered it, I was actually depressed. I felt incredibly like life was a treadmill, blah about life. Like there was no point that we were going to get married, have a couple of kids, buy a house, and you know, grow old and then die. And it sounds a bit dramatic because I am, but that is how I felt. And uh, I was struggling to um, enjoy my life in any way. And I had two healthy kids, a lovely partner, but it just did not feel anything for my life. And so it was concerning me because I wasn't being a great mom or a great partner and I wanted to be those things. So I went and I found a nun. I'd heard about this lady who was helping people um, with some counseling and kind of spiritual direction sort of stuff. And I'm not Catholic, but I wanted a whole new perspective. And she certainly gave me that. And I sat down with her and I was kind of suggesting why I might be so unhappy. And she... um, listened patiently and then she said to me no I think the secret to happiness is reflection and gratitude and at that time I was like that's a bit underwhelming um (laughs) what does that mean in my life and yes I'm very grateful for my healthy kids I know in my head that these are all good things that I have and I should be grateful but what about this feeling I don't feel anything for it and so she helped me and she said, Haley, I want you to do a 10-day project and just take 10 minutes every day, reflect through the day, really think through your conversations, you had breakfast, what did you do after that? And then find, um, see if there's anything there that pops out to you that you're grateful for. Not what you should, but what you feel. And and so I, st- took, her, I took her advice and I did it. And it sparked something amazing within me because I started to see things I wouldn't otherwise have seen. And they weren't the things you'd think. And um, that 10-day project was amazing, but I knew I needed more of that. I needed a lot more of that. (laughs) And so being a photographer, I decided I was going to do a photo a day for a whole year of something I was grateful for every single day. And I bought enough Polaroid film um, to do a year-long project. And uh, this is kind of what it started to look like. Um, Oh, no, not that. Let's go back one. Yeah. Um, It was things like the color green, the billion different shades of green there are. I was suddenly one day just struck by it. It was my youngest daughter helping me down a step. She's like three, and she was like, I'll help you down. And it was just adorable. And things like money on the meter when you have no money in your wallet, that is amazing. It is such a gift. And I started to see things like rainy days meant that I got to use my favorite umbrellas. And pancakes on a Sunday morning, they're so good I didn't get to photograph them, sorry. But they're there and beautiful friends getting married. Little and beautiful, special little moments throughout every single day that made me delight in my day. Actually, through the project, I learned quite a lot of things, and sorry, I keep doing it twice. Um, And probably the biggest thing I learned was how my expectations on other people prevented me from really appreciating who they were namely my husband, who is here, and I'm going to say it, he's not very romantic. Um, <laughs> and, and this is what I thought, anyway. I just didn't think he was very... Um, didn't take me on dates and didn't buy lots of flowers and do all the things that in my head a husband should do. And uh, this one day, I hadn't taken my grateful photo for the day, and I was scanning my life, basically, for what was I grateful for today. And I was looking around the room, and then I saw my husband serving dinner. And in the corner of my eye, I watched as he put the biggest piece of pie on my plate. The best piece of pie on my plate. And uh, I was like, whoa, I wouldn't have seen it if I hadn't been looking. And uh, he was doing that every day, actually. He was putting me forward first. But I wasn't seeing it because I wasn't looking. And... uh, It completely changed my view of how I see people, 
particularly him. And uh, through the project, he just continued to do beautiful things, not even thinking about it. Every day we drive somewhere, he would always hold my hand as we drove. He would sing our daughters to sleep with a ukulele. And if I rang complaining one day at work while he was at work, our house is too hot, we have no air conditioning, he would arrive with ice cream. And uh, it really made me reevaluate our relationship and what my expectations were and opened my eyes to who he was. And actually, at the end of the project, someone interviewed us and they asked Andrew, who, what did you notice that was different within your relationship or with Haley?" And he said, I feel like I am enough for her now. And that hit me hard. I'd been married to him for eight years at that point. And I was sad that it had taken me eight years to see him, to see all the beautiful things he was doing for me every single day. But I'm glad that I got there in the end. And I'm grateful for this project. The other thing I noticed was nature. And it was so unexpected, but nature just spoke to me so much. The color red that would shine just so differently if the sun was on it. The um, way my daughter would put beautiful little flowers in my handbag. Or mint. The smell of mint is amazing. It's beautiful. Or the way weeds would dance when you drove past your car. The wind would blow them. Or dandelions, which I, I like dandelions all over my backyard. I think they're beautiful. And all these little things started to make me feel so like I was blessed. I am so lucky to be here to see these little gifts. A beetle flew onto my daughter's shirt one day in a car park. You can she, see she's absolutely thrilled about that. <laughs> but I was amazed. She had this beetle and it was like a piece of jewelry. It was amazing, and it stayed there long enough for me to take a photo, and she's like, get it off, get it off, and I'm like, stay still. <laughs> anyway, uh, another thing I learned was about parenting. I had really felt like this was the boringest job I'd ever had, and it was long, and there were lots of food and lots of nappies and things that were boring, like dishes, and would, people would always say, what have you been up today? I was like, don't ask me. <laughs> But this project showed me what a delight and an honor it was to be in their company, to be with them as they, you know, offered to take my hand or le uh, were singing so loudly in the car as we drove, pretending to be candy canes, <laughs> <laughs> losing their two front teeth. It is my privilege that I got that time with them and I started to see that right when I was with them. And I'm so grateful that I, while they were still little, that I saw what a gift it was. One of the amazing things about this project is that it, it kind of spread like wildfire. And uh, it, I had a magazine article and it was online and a few people started to write and t tell me their own stories with their grateful projects. And it, um, it's been a complete honor to have that. And uh, this particular person is Amy Gill, and she and I have become good friends, but she um, wrote to me an email one day, not long after she had given birth to twin daughters, and one of them, 24 days later, died of a heart complication. And I would like to read you a piece of her letter to me. And uh, Amy knows that I'm reading this. <laughs> the next few days were hard. I had to pick myself up and keep going as I had Annabelle, a three-year-old, and Penny, who needed me, and I was so lost. It was funny, though, because for some reason your article kept coming back to me. I dug out the magazine, and I looked at it again, and I checked out your website. I decided that this was how I was going to cope. Instead of looking at what I had lost, I was going to focus on what I gained and be truly grateful for having Rosie in our lives, even for such a short time. In her 24 days, she had taught me more than I'd learned in a lifetime. I was grateful for the chance to hold her, to feed her, to bath her, and tell her that I loved her. No longer would I take the small things for granted in my life. Life is too short, and I decided that each day I would count my blessings, and so my grateful project, Count Your Blessings, began. 
And now I've taken 73 blessing photos and I'm truly grateful for them. The project has gotten me through such a hard time. Yes, I still have my moments of sadness, but I have so many more moments of joy. I've chosen to be happy, and this week I've been looking back at my album and reflecting on where I've come from. And I want to thank you, Haley, for being an inspiration. For you, I am truly grateful. Amy. And uh, I cannot tell you what an honor it is to be part of someone's story in that way. And uh, uh, Amy really really reminded me that even in the hard things in life that we can choose to be grateful that we can find the most amazing treasure in the most awful things and uh, you really do find what you are looking for and in my life when I have had hard times and things go wrong I've really found that gratefulness has helped me learn the most I can possibly learn and um, appreciate everything that's happening and to find the gold in the mud. (laughs) And now I really, when I look back on my project and actually my life, I see delight, I see beauty, I see a life I'm incredibly rich and grateful for. And it isn't that I own a house, (laughs) Um, and it isn't happiness outside of me, it is within me. And I've learned that that is where my happiness is, it's in here. And, and through this project, I've surprisingly been able to help other people find that too. And that's been an absolute honour. Thank you very much for having me.